What's going on guys, Ben Gleaner coming back at you with another video and it is about that time once again for us to delve back into the absolute dumpster fire that is the Cleveland Browns organization. However, in this past offseason they've made a number of moves that you know should have propelled their franchise a little bit better into the future. Miles Garrett showing to be an excellent pick when he's been healthy. I think he's picked up, I think tied for most sacks ever in someone's first three games, I think it, which is uh, four. So Miles Garrett has played extremely well when healthy. It's just that one issue of can he stay healthy? And in this particular rebuild, yes, injuries are turned off for the sake of building purposes. And so, you know, an entire season doesn't get screwed over because the Madden Sim uh, injuries just are like set on 300% about what would actually be accurate. So David Dejoku still can't catch. And um, you have Jabril Peppers who really has shown that he, ha you know, he can't do much at this level. Perhaps the Browns aren't playing him in the best system. I haven't seen too many Browns games because I value my time. And let's be honest, not the best use of time to watch the Cleveland Browns play. But there is potential there. In this realistic rebuild, we obviously uh, will not be able to trade many of our old pieces. So Joe Thomas will retire a Brown. Jason McCourty likely will retire a Brown. Same thing with many of these players currently on the roster. It's pretty much going to come down to can we actually draft well, which is the main issue that the Browns have had over the past couple of years. And by, when I say couple, I mean like actually several decades. So if we can get this Browns team to actually draft well, and that's one of my main strengths in this game that separates me perhaps from other of your favorite Madden content creators, I'm a tremendous drafter. It's really not even hard. Watch my video if you want to be good at it. I've made like several drafting and scouting tip videos. This is how you do it. We're taking the Browns, realistic rebuilding. We've got the picks. We have the offensive line in place. We have some young talent. All it is now is, you know, further building upon that and developing them. Better than what the Cleveland Browns can actually do in real life thus far. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Pro tip for Sammy Coates. Maybe cut off the dreads so they're not so heavy that they pull your hairline all the way back. Dude, I don't know what's going on with that. But the quarterback situation is almost as bad as Sammy Coates' hairline in that situation. Deshaun Kaiser, Kevin Hogan, and Cody Kessler. Horrific. Although, in this realistic rebuild, they might actually develop, and I might have to stick with them at quarterback. We got on the offensive line, uh, what is this, Zach? Is it, it is Zach Banner. We have Joel Batonio, JC Treader, Kevin Zeitler, and Sean Coleman. David Njoku, of course, Seth DeValve. On defense, we have Jabril Peppers, who is a nice 69 overall. Uh, Ibrahim Campbell, though, is interesting. Christian Kersey, Joe Schobert. We have Jamie Collins, Derek Kindred. Brian Bally, Body Calhoun, excuse me. Jason McCourty, who's had a tremendous season. That's one of the reasons he's a 91 overall right now. Jamar Taylor. And on the D-line, we have, of course, Miles Garrett, Danny Shelton, Larry. Larry Ogunjobi. Emmanuel Agba, Carl Nassib, Nate Orchard. It's a decent team for development's sake. I think Miles Garrett's going to be an absolute monster in this. I think we're going to stick in the 4-3. Um, and hopefully, we can actually start winning some games. Or Let's not the first season. Let's just tank. Uh, but then draft some players and then win some games. That's actually what we should do. All right, here we are at the midseason mark. It looks like Isaiah Crowell is a free agent. Don't think we're going to sign him back. Josh Gordon's also here. I think he deserves a fresh uh, place to go. New scenery. Not going to bring him back. Not going to bring back Kevin Hogan. Uh, I don't really see us re-signing anyone. We are, however, 3-5. and five. Not nearly as terrible as I want us to be. How are we winning games? This shouldn't be a thing. I don't want to win games. I want to lose. Hold on. Beat the Steelers. <laughs> Got crushed by the Ravens. Lost to the Colts. Lost to the Bengals. Okay. Annihilated the Jets. And then got annihilated by the Texans. Very interesting. Very interesting season. Interesting. That's all I can say. Um, let's go ahead and simulate to the playoffs. See you guys there. All right, so we did miss out on the playoffs. Question is, how badly? 5-11. and 11, Not nearly as bad as I would have liked to go. The Ravens finished worse than we did at 4-12. and 12. 
I wonder where that puts us in terms of bottom of the league. Falcons go 15 and one. Most losses is the Jets two and 14. Looks like we're gonna pick top six, but oh man, that that's tough. That is that's actually pretty annoying. Well, yeah, there's nothing I can say there. It's just frustrating. Let's go ahead and simulate to the off season and then see who might be in free agency for us to bring in. All right, in free agency, we obviously have a lot of money. 53 mil. However, Jarek McKinnon is the best player available, which doesn't really interest me. I'm not going to lie. Aaron Lynch, however, does kind of. I'll rather stick with Emmanuel Agba. Let's go ahead and check out the stats before I forget, which is, I pretty much already did. But uh, we're here now. Jashon Kaiser. 3,300 yards, 19 touchdowns, 16 interceptions, rushing Duke Johnson at over 1,000 yards, 4.1 per carry, and 7 touchdowns receiving. David Njoku led our team in catches with 66 catches for 843 yards and 9 touchdowns. Very good, receive, or very good receiving stats there for the rookie out of the U. Kenny Britt is here as well. And we obviously didn't see Crowell or Josh Gordon as they are not on the team anymore. So, of course, why would it show the season stats? I don't know. Zach Banner decided he didn't want to play. He just stand out of there on the field and let anyone by. Like, I don't know, a bouncer not doing his job, something. Tackles for loss, though. 14 from Miles Garrett, who also led our team in sacks with 15 and a half. Interceptions, four for McCourty, two for both Kindred, Kindred and Body Calhoun. Forced fumbles, three from Jabril Peppers. Okay, he also had two recoveries that led the team. And he also had a defensive touchdown. And that was the only one for our team. What about awards? Who won something? Tom Brady's MVP. Not a gigantic surprise there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell again. Not a gigantic su a surprise. Jeez, I can't talk in these headphones. AFC Defensive Player of the Year goes to Koa Misi. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but they're noise canceling, so I can't hear shit. So when I'm talking, I can't hear myself at all. Leonard Fournette wins Rookie of the Year. I swear he's either a 98 or a 99 in his first year every single franchise. Kareem Hunt. There we have Deshaun Kaiser at four, David Njoku at five. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Miles Garrett. That's going to be a ton of experience points, which is great. Jabril Peppers at nine. I would have rather him uh, win it, actually, because Miles um, Garrett, already a superstar development, already a pretty high overall. You see the XP. There isn't a ton of it on offense. Defensively, I mean, Miles Garrett has a lot, and that's kind of it. But uh, I'm going to do some scouting and then see you guys for the draft. Here we are in the draft, and what we're going to do here is usually I would just show you guys you know, after I take the picks, and then you have everyone asking me, how would you get the real players in the draft? Which, unfortunately, EA and Madden, do not have an option to import draft classes. They used to. They used to. They don't anymore, which sucks, but they don't. However, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys the picks, and then I'm going to tell you the player that I'm turning them into in the editing process. Same stats and everything, just different name, different information about you know their height, weight, where they went to school, and of course, again, their name. But um, here we go. We have the sixth pick. We also have the 11th pick. Hopefully we can take some talented players. There are a few on my board that I would like to draft. We'll see if they are available. With my first pick, I am taking a cornerback out of Pitt. He looks pretty good. I just see 6'4", and he's incredibly fast, so he's got a great frame. His top three skills are also like the best of any corner in the draft, which is kind of not, it's not great because they're not as good as I would like them to be. But C-pluses can be you know, 79 and 79. His zone coverage is already good. I think he's going to be very fast, very agile. He's already very tall. I think he's going to be a good player. We need a cornerback. He's the best cornerback on the board. Here we go. Sergio Crawford, 81 overall. Superstar development is that main thing that I care about right there. Can you guys even see that? I changed my face cam. You can kind of see it. I might move myself to the top left. But um, yeah, 93 speed, 79 man, 85 zone, 96 excel, 90 agility, 79 press. 81 overall, superstar development. I guess you guys can kind of see it. It doesn't really matter if I move for now. I'll do it for another video. Um, but I guess it doesn't really matter if he's 6'4", because I'm going to change his height and weight anyway. Regardless, it's I mean, it's a good pick. He's ranked number 10 in the draft. I'm okay with taking him at number 6. Not really a reach to me. But uh, let me tell you guys who we're going to turn this into. I haven't decided yet, to be honest. 
So I try to pick one of the players in the draft that I think fits him the best uh, for his abilities and one of the best players in the draft in my opinion. Cornerback out of Florida State, Tavares McFadden. He is 6'2", 198, very similar to Sergio Crawford here. So we're just going to, you know, drop the height by two. We'll probably leave the weight about the same because there is a little bit of bulk that goes on at the next level and as the players get older. So Sergio Crawford out of Pitt equals Tavares McFadden out of Florida State. Next up in the draft, we're going to be taking a safety out of Tennessee, Shaquan Norris. I think I'm probably going to make this Derwin James, uh, although the comparison isn't really there from a height weight perspective. However, in the combine report, it is the, the hit power it is. We're going to take him, though. Shaquan Norris, 79 overall, but superstar development. Getting really lucky with that in this particular video thus far. He's ranked number 21. We took him at 11. But yes, I think this is probably going to be Derwin James, unless I find someone. Because Derwin James is not 5'10". But uh, he is big. He does hit really hard. He flies around the field. Could be him. We'll see. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and call him Derwin James. Based on where he is picked and how good he is, I think Derwin James is the best fit. Let's go ahead and simulate now to the second round. All right, so I'm not going to lie. This Richard Rush fellow out of USC is really tempting to me because he is a baller, but he has first round talent, which is something you do not see a lot from ballers. I wonder why he skipped the combine. Not sure. I don't know. I'm tempted. I am. But we do have... Uh, Duke Johnson. Don't necessarily need this player. I'm going to look at other positions for right now. I think I'm actually going to trade this pick away for a pick next year or multiple, depending on what's available here. Um, I don't know why this would be an offer from the Niners. It's just like, yeah, if we could just move up uh, with your pick and we'll just give you ours. Like, no, why would I, why would I do that? However, if there's another better offer, the Saints are offering me something I like. So are the Seattle Seahawks. So are the Colts, kind of. But right now, it is between the Seahawks and the Saints. I think the Saints are giving me the most value. Although, I mean, that's going to be a higher draft pick next year. Um, or lower draft pick than what the Saints are offering me. If the Saints don't have Drew Brees, which they might... We're going we're gonna to do it with the Saints and hope for the best. Who do they end up taking? Richard Rush still on the board. Interesting. Or Richard, did I say Rush? I don't know. It doesn't matter. With this pick, though, I am taking Jarrell Hamilton out of Michigan State. I think we're going to make this Arden Key. Based on his top three skills and um, his combine, I think he compares favorably. Great finesse moves. Good other top three skills. And he absolutely flat out flies. Four, five, eight speed. Here he is. Ranked number 16 in the draft. We took him at number 43. 87 speed as a defensive end. Holy. Only normal development, but like normal is fine. He's an 80 overall. Here we go. All right. I didn't flat out say that that was going to be Arden Key. Uh, so we're going to pick a player who's a little bit faster, and that's Dorrance Armstrong out of Kansas. Someone that's so, so quick. I think he's going to run a blazing 40 time, and he's, you know, a 3-4 Outside linebacker, 4-3 defensive end. He's an edge rusher, basically. So it's going to be Dorrance Armstrong out of Kansas. And let's move on to our next pick. Pick number 18 here in the second. These players that skip the combine, they're so enticing to me. If anyone that flips the bird to Roger Goodell doesn't attend the combine, which I don't know why I'm obsessed with that so much. I actually love watching the combine. I do every year. But good top three skills. I think he's going to be a good slot receiver. You know, it just depends on speed and everything. We're going to take Ruben Hughes here. He's supposed to go in the third, even though, you know, his talent is late second round. How good is he? Can I, not dra can I draft him, please? Oh, no. Skipping the combine, not a great idea. Slow development. However, he's ranked 61. We take him at 50. 90 speed, 87 route running is great. 83 catching, 90 excel, 83 catching traffic. It's just spectacular catch, awareness, and I assume release. Is, yeah, release is really low. The fact, though, that he has slow development, I guess is classic Brown, so that is part of this realistic rebuild process. But, uh, yeah, unfortunate. I got I to gotta stay away from the ballers this year. However, I do want to take them. Uh, we're going to make that player who we just... What was his name? Ruben Hughes. I don't know. Who's a good slot receiver in college? All right. This is going to be Debo Samuel 
out of uh, USC or I get South Carolina. But there are no receivers, in my opinion, that are even the top four rounds uh, that are even under six foot. So Ruben Hughes equals Debo Samuel. I think this is a decently fair comparison. It's a, the comparison doesn't matter. I mean, it just feels a little bit better. But yeah, Ruben Hughes is going to be Debo Samuel out of South Carolina. And we have another pick. Do we? Yeah. We're going to take our chance on a mobile QB out of BC. Amazing combine. Pretty good looking top three skills as well. He's got an arm on him. Here he is. Interesting. Drafted him at number 70. He is ranked 54th in the draft. 75 overall. Quick development. 85 speed. Looks a lot like Johnny Football in terms of measurables. Better development, though. Actually, fun fact, Johnny Manziel had superstar development when he got drafted. Way to go, EA. I couldn't have called that from further away, by the way. That was an instant bus call, but so many people at the time you know, thought he was going to be the next big thing in the NFL. Clearly not true. I don't know. Let's find like a good mid-round quarterback to, to make this guy. I think, I mean, there aren't that many blazing 40 times out of people that could be drafted in this range. I thought about maybe making this guy uh, DeAndre Francois, but I think he's probably going to be drafted a little bit later in the draft. I don't want to move up that much. So I think we're going to go ahead and make this Jake Browning out of Washington. Jake Browning is actually a decent player. We're going to convert him into, uh, or I guess Norman Hepner, who we drafted, into Jake Browning. So Jake Browning in the third round. Might be our new starting quarterback. Quick development. I don't know. Not really going to bother around with changing offensive linemen's name. Uh, names that are drafted, you know, in the third round and beyond. So we're just going to take Jeffrey McGelly here out of Pitt. Another Pitt player in this draft. Good top three skills. Good combine. Here we go. 77 overall. And he's going to fit right into this offensive line very well. Again, 47 overall in the draft. We took him at 102. He's a 77 overall. Normal development, which that obviously was something better. But those are just so rare that you really can't find those all that often in every draft. So decent pick there. Might play him at center over J.C. Treader. Might move him to a different offensive line spot. At this point, we're kind of grasping at straws for any type of reasonable talent, which is expected. So I'm just going to trade this pick down for something next year. Cowboys is somewhat tempting. We're going to go ahead and do this with the Cincinnati Bengals. Take their third rounder next year and move on into the fifth round. And unless we take someone that's really a phenomenal player, which there aren't really any left, uh, there may, may be one or two that I think could be good. We're not going to bother changing their name either. So here we go. Christian Akeem out of Arizona. He looks pretty average. He looks like what a fifth round pick would get me. And uh, yeah, he is 71 overall. Like not bad, but also not really anything good. With this pick, I'm taking a quarterback out of Buffalo. And boy, in my uh, Kelvin Benjamin trading to the or traded to the Buffalo Bills video, I made like kind of a sly remark about why would anyone want to go to Buffalo as a joke, and so many people got so mad. It was hilarious. Absolutely made my day. In fact, let me go find one of the funnier comments and read it out to you guys because they had me dying. This is a great one. Go fuck yourself with God knows why would anyone want to go to Buffalo. He should have quoted me there. Use quote marks. So uh, I actually know that he's quoting me, but I figured that out. Um, what shit town do you live in? Multiple question marks and exclamation points after everything he says, by the way, because he's serious. Underhanded shot at Buffalo two exclamation points, followed up by a good old-fashioned fuck you cunt. Thank you. Two exclamation points after that one as well. That was a great one. There are more. Let me go find some. This dude said he don't know why anybody would want to come to Buffalo. I, I, I'm adding some words there to make the sentence flow a little bit better. Give me one reason why not. How about it's cold, snowy, and the crime rate is not great? It's kind of, uh, I don't know. It, whatever. The point, you guys get it. People got mad. But Bryant Nicholson out of Buffalo. Go Bulls! Here we go. 73 overall quick development. Drafted him at 166. He's ranked 80th in the draft. We'll give him a player. Who's he going to be? 84 speed? You might. You know what? Might as well make this DeAndre Francois. Might as well. And with my last pick, we took CJ Yates out of Utah. Good looking player. Ranked 109, we took him at 188. Solid pick, and that is the end of the draft for us. Actually, we might have had one more pick. Doesn't matter, it's not going to be a good player anyway. Alright, so this is, you know, everyone changed that we wanted to change. 
Tavares McFadden, Florida State. Derwin James, another Florida State defensive back. Actually, I didn't even realize that at the time. Interesting. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong Jr., of course, out of Kansas. I actually really like this guy. Uh, hopefully does big things in the NFL. Debo Samuel. And I know it's weird because, you know, Kansas is in the same division, the Big 12, as uh, our conference, as my favorite team, Texas. But, uh, you know, you get to see him, and he's a very, very good player. A nice guy as well. Debo Samuel out of South Carolina, though. Jake Browning is going to be a very interesting player in a quarterback competition with DeAndre Francois, another Florida State player. What is going on with this team? But, uh, yeah, Jake Browning versus DeAndre Francois. Is that the story of training camp? They're very similar in overall. Jake Browning, quick development. DeAndre Francois, quick development. We're going to have to see exactly what happens. Uh, but things will be very, very interesting. And, of course, the rest of our CPU, or not CPU drafted, but our drafted players who we're not going to even bother changing could be a very interesting preseason. And, in fact, I'm going to show you guys the preseason week by week. Actually, I'm going to cut to Sean Kaiser. I know that seems kind of odd, but we don't need him. We're going to cut to Sean Kaiser and uh, just have our two QBs there battling it out in preseason. Whoever does better in preseason, I'm going to name the starting quarterback. So I guess I will see you guys for you know week four. All right, here we are in week four. Um, DeAndre Francois more than likely is going to get more reps as he's second on the team, so he's going to play more. However, they both have nearly identical attempts. DeAndre Francois, far more yards for double the amount of touchdowns. However, he has quadruple the amount of interceptions, a worse completion percentage, very similar passer rating, um, and he's taken more sacks. In just three fewer downs played, Cody Kessler has not really played at all. But um, I guess the moment of truth, whoever performs better, is going to uh, be our new starting quarterback. Here we go. Actually, I'm going to jump in the game because I don't know how I can view the preseason stats without actually simming the game this way. So, uh, yeah, I guess this game, because the stats have been nearly identical, way more yards for Francois, however, three more interceptions, very similar uh, quarterback rating. So it's pretty much whoever does better in this game is the new starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. However, as the past history has shown, anything could happen to change that at any point. All right, here we go. Who is the new starting quarterback? Okay, so DeAndre Francois came out 94.6 quarterback rating, 14 completions on 21 attempts, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Jake Browning, um, 70.4 quarterback rating, only had five attempts though, uh, two completions for 42 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. I mean, this is a, this is a toss-up. If you're going based on overall quarterback rating, even overall, DeAndre Francois, I think, would have the edge. I, we, we're going to check the overall stats, though, before we advance to the regular season. This is this is neck and neck. I mean, it really could go to anyone. All right, so here's, here's what we're looking at. DeAndre Francois can throw for the yards, clearly, as way more yards than Jake Browning. He can throw for touchdowns. Six times the amount of interceptions than Jake Browning had is slightly concerning. His quarterback or passer rating was a little bit better. He threw for more yards. Um, it's it's very interesting. It's very interesting. He had way more downs played in that last game, which, I mean, I don't know. Who do we go? I think DeAndre Francois is a slightly more exciting pick. I think it'd be more of a story. We take the sixth or seventh round. I think it was a sixth round draft pick. Start him over the third round guy. Who looks better? I would say right off the bat, probably Jake Browning does. Throw power is nearly identical. Throw on the run, DeAndre Francois has it. He's a little bit slower. Accuracy is a little bit worse. I think we're, I think we're going to go with DeAndre Francois. We're going to upgrade everyone on the team, though including, of course, DeAndre Francois. Get some of his stats up a bit. I don't know. Maybe that's not the right call. Maybe Jake Browning is the call. I don't know. All right, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade these players, though. And, uh, yeah, DeAndre Francois is the starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. Don't know how that has happened, but it has. Is he the right pick for the position? Who is to say? We'll find out. He has almost no weapons to throw to at all. 
So this is the team for season number two. I think it looks pretty good. Starting our drafted center, Miguelie, or he was the left guard. We're starting him at center. Got a bunch of rookies out there, including DeAndre Francois, including Debo Samuel on the defense side of the ball, including Dorrance Armstrong Jr. As I said, I'm extremely high on this player. Tavares McFadden will be playing in the slot. We got Derwin James out there. And Tavares McFadden actually looks quite a bit like Derwin James in the game. I didn't bother to change faces or anything. It's just uh, purely, I guess, luck, if you want to say. But that's the team. Hopefully they play okay. I hope they do. Here we go. Simulate to the midseason. See how everyone's doing. All right, so at the midseason mark, we are 4-3. and three. Looks like Joe Thomas is someone we're going to want to re-sign. Currently, actually not doing too poorly. About second in the AFC North. So let's go ahead and sign some of our players back. Despite being the first tackle ever in the NFL and being as old as anything, Joe Thomas has re-signed a four-year deal. Hopefully he plays through all of it. Jason McCourty has already started to regress. You can't see it now, but, I mean, he was a 91. Now he's an 88, so clear as day. I don't really want him to be my feature back, but I think we're going to bring back Duke Johnson on something long-term, maybe five years. J-Mac did re-sign, by the way. As did Danny Shelton, Brian Body Calhoun, and Duke Johnson. Those are all the players that I'm really interested in right now. Let's go ahead and simulate to the end of the season, aka the playoffs, which maybe we'll actually make. All right, so we did not make the playoffs, finishing 5-11. and 11. Okay, that is not how I expected it to go. Uh, clearly, we did not finish as nice as we started. DeAndre Francois, 4,182 yards, 32 touchdowns. Did throw 20 interceptions, though. That's rough. Rushing, we have Duke Johnson, 1,200 yards, 9 touchdowns. 4.5 on the ground is quite good. I do want to have him more as a backup than an actual starting running back. Kenny Britt led our team in catches. However, yards went to rookie Debo Samuel, who also caught 10 touchdowns. Corey Coleman with 9 touchdowns is good. Duke, actually, David Njoku, 827 yards. Quarterback sacks, nine from Joe Thomas. Defensively, Christian Akeem led our team in tackles with 149. Tackles for loss would be 15 from Miles Garrett. Quarterback sacks, 11 and a half for the rookie out of Kansas, Dorrance Armstrong Jr., nine and a half for Jamie Collins. Interceptions, we have five from Jason McCourty. Not too many for the team in total, though. Derek Kindred, I, I totally forgot to do this, so we're back here now. Derek Kindred led our team in four fumbles with three. Three also for Krishna Akeem. Three for Jamar Taylor. Fumble recoveries, we also have two for Kindred and Taylor. And then any defensive touchdowns? No. All right, of course, to add to his magnificent resume of never being beaten in the playoffs, never losing a Super Bowl, Blake Bortles, league MVP, why not? And of course, he probably, yep, AFC Offensive Player of the Year as well. Why not, Blake Bortles? Defensive player of the year goes to Melvin Ingram. Any Browns? No. Offense rookie of the year, Brenton Urbic. Why could that not be DeAndre Francois? We won more games. That means he's better. Debo Samuel at number five. What about defensive rookie of the year? Sanchez Rogers. Christian Akeem just missed it. Then there's Dorrance Armstrong. Then Tavares McFadden. And of course, Derwin James. We just missed out on all of these really important awards that we could have won. But now it's time to go to the offseason and address season number three. I just really wish I had slightly more coach XP so I could turn that into uh, the quarterback development trait. Who's a free agent? Kelvin Benjamin. Interesting. The new Buffalo Bill. I'm in. He's actually pretty good in this game. I just realized that'd be another Florida State player on the team. I need to increase this deal. I'm comfortable playing him uh, seven mil a year at least. In the game, he's kind of an animal. There we go. I think that's probably a pretty good deal. Puts me in the lead by a wide margin. Hopefully, we should be able to get him. And uh, I think that's probably going to be about it. Dante Fowler Jr. is actually pretty enticing. But I'm really looking for an interior player. Malcolm Brown, hook him horns. Not Florida State, though. And that's pretty much what this team is turning into. Most heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. So, Malcolm Brown accepted, Kelvin Benjamin accepted. We're just adding Florida State players. It's pretty much the moral of, of this rebuild story. DeAndre Francois, Florida State. Kelvin Benjamin, Florida State. Go on to the defensive side of the ball. Derwin James, Florida State. Uh, Tavares McFadden, Florida State. We have, I don't know, probably more. 
I don't know. Alright, so this is one of the most talented classes I've ever seen. For example, quarterback Marcus Overstreet out of UCLA is one of the best players I've ever seen. I think he's going to be a tremendously high overall. I really would like to take him. Um, DeAndre Francois is not set in stone. We could make a move to trade him. I want to make multiple moves to trade up in this draft. However, I still have to remain realistic. So I think we're going to take a Minnesota Vikings of 2013 approach. Was it 2013? It might have been 2014. It might have been 2014. When were uh, Sharif Floyd, Cordero Patterson, and who was their other pick that year? Was it Xavier Rhodes? I think that was... All right, it was it was 2013. I'm yeah. I just let me just confirm. Sharif Floyd here, defense tackle out of Florida, was drafted. He doesn't even have a picture on Wikipedia. He's good. <laughs> I don't know. I think we might take a Minnesota Vi Soda Vikings. I can't even speak. These headphones, man. I swear, we're gonna take a 2013 Vikings approach and try to get a third first rounder. I'm telling you, there are some can't miss prospects in here, and uh, I mean, I don't know what I'd do if I missed out on them. 49ers are on the board. Do they have a quarterback? We're going to check because that's going to impact where I decide to trade up. I've made the decision. We're trading up for that quarterback. Have they drafted a quarterback? Have they taken care of that? No, they have not. I need this pick. All right, I'm going to propose this pick to the 49ers. I think it's fair because, uh, I mean, Kenny Britt is not a tremendous receiver, although they do have interest in him. We're giving them a fourth round next year back, and we're offering Jake Browning you know, a young quarterback who's a decently high overall, nearly an 80, quick development. And uh, let's see if they accept this. And they do. We are now the owners of the number one overall pick. And I think you guys know where it's going. And the Browns draft Fonte Mack. No, this is not a Kevin Costner movie. We're going with the quarterback. Marquez Overstreet out of UCLA. There he is. He's going to be the equivalent of, we'll say, uh, I mean, UCLA screams make this Josh Rosen. However, all signs point to Sam Darnold staying another year at USC. We're going to say he dominates his junior season. Or junior? I think he's a redshirt sophomore right now. No. I don't... I, yes? He might... I, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, however, Marquez Overstreet out of UCLA. 84 overall. Superstar development. We're making him Sam Darnold. I think he compares favorably. He's got an arm, decent speed on him. Very, very pleased with that first pick. With this pick, I'm going Corey Tull out of Bama. Great top three skills. Great combine. Here he is. 81 overall, ranked number 10. We took him at 4, 85 speed, 86 tackle, 86 block shed, 90 hit power, 83 pursuit. I think he can come in and be our new starting middle linebacker. That's the plan. As to who I'm going to make him in the real NFL for the 2019 draft class, uh, I'll decide in a second. We're going to call that Roquan Smith out of Georgia, one of the top linebackers in the country. I think that's a fair comparison. Let's go ahead and move on to our 12th pick. I would really like to take Cassius Nolan here. I think he'd be a fantastic fit inside a defensive tackle. He looks amazing, really, really does. Uh, Reggie Finley also looks pretty good. He could be our number one back. Tremendously fast, good top three skills. It's just a question of, like, who do we go here? We're going to go best player available, and that is Cassius Nolan. Absolute monster out of Wisco. Here we go, Cassius Nolan. Oh, interesting. He's ranked number 9 in the draft. We took him at number 12. He doesn't fit the scheme, so he's a low overall, 78 over. That's not low. That's lower. He's a lower overall. Superstar development, though. He's tremendous. 89 power move, 82 block shed, 86 tackle, 88 strength, 73 speed. He looks like he'd be an absolutely dominant defensive tackle. So I'm extremely happy with that pick. We have a number of kinks to work out with who's playing where and what particular scheme we might run with. But the draft has been very, very good so far. And he is going to be, I don't know. You know what? Based on how dominant this player is going to be, I got, a, I got a, a, a player for you right now. It's Ed Oliver out of Houston. In my mind, maybe the best player in all of college football right now. We're going to say, you know, first round pick, dominant potential player. Ed Oliver is a Cleveland Brown, and that defensive line looks frightening. I actually got to take this pick. Okay. The running back still available. I think we're going to make this 
Benny Snell out of Kentucky. I don't think that this player is going to be amazing based on the fact that he's still on the board. I think he has the stats and the combine. He's got the speed. But just the fact that he's still available really concerns me. Let's go ahead and see where he is. Okay, actually, no, he is sick. 80 overall, 96 speed, 90 excel, 91 carrying, 84 ball carry vision, 85 juke move, ranked number 12 in the draft. We picked him up at number 36. This draft has been going very, very well. And we have some huge names in Ed Oliver, in Sam Darnold. Um, and now with the addition of Benny Snell, maybe, maybe that would be an even better thing. I think I might still start Duke Johnson though. Kind of have to, right? Now we're going to take Linval Little, who is going to be Jabari Zuniga out of Florida, a 3-4 pass rusher. Um, I don't know, looks pretty decent for a third round pick. Nothing much else to say on that. Here he is. Um, we reached on him a little bit, ranked number 95. We took him at 68. He's not a bad player, just uh, he doesn't exactly fit our scheme currently, as it's kind of a weird scheme that the Browns run. I might change some things around as I hinted at earlier. All right, basically all the players on my board, I'm not going to really bother changing any of their names unless they're sick, but they're all like fifth or sixth round beyond. So we're just going to take some of them now because we have uh, three, four, four, five, six, and seven to go left in the draft. I don't really care if it says reach or not. We're just going to take the players that we want. Starting out with... Ooh, do we want to take the rock legend, or aka pop legend, young Aaron Carter with, oh, what was that song that he sang? How I Beat Shaq, what else? Okay, I can't remember. All right, I found How I Beat Shaq. What is his actual main song? I Want Candy, that's it. Classic. Aaron Carter is now black and plays in the NFL. This was what, a six round guy? who is clearly not. He's ranked number 27. We took him at 69. Not the fastest, but I mean, hey, he's a pop singing white kid that's now in the NFL and not not either of those things. Interesting. Good pick. That's a six-round guy. We took him in the third, and it was still a really good value pick. We actually will change his name since he's such a good player. Uh, Deion Kane out of Clemson. I think it works pretty well. That's who that is. Deion Kane. Next up, Dwight Bin out of Michigan State. Not going to bother with his name no matter how good he is. Another excellent pick, number 38 in the draft. We took about 100. 80 strength, 83 run block, 77 pass block, 87 impact blocking, 73 overall. I just don't really see him playing, though. I'm kind of like hoping for one of those amazing, amazing picks. That's a really, really solid pick. I just fear that he won't be good enough to start. Let's go with another offensive lineman in Evan Bartell out of Florida State. I think he might be even better. I'd say 75, 76 overall probably. And he's a 75 overall. Again, another excellent pick. Ranked number 39 in the draft. We took him at 108, 80 strength, 86 run block, 76 pass block, and 84 impact blocking. This, I think, is probably the best lineman and the last one that I'll take of the bunch. Tremendous combine. Very, very well-rounded. I could actually see him being a very high overall. He might start this season. If he has good development, I'm plugging him in no matter what. Malcolm Murray out of TCU. At another excellent pick. He's ranked 37 in the draft. 74 overall, though. Quick development. I got to find a place for him to start no matter what. 85 strength, 82 run block, 83 pass block, 85 impact blocking. He's the best. I think we just took 37, 38, and 39 in the draft. All offensive linemen, but um, very, very good player. And keep in mind, these guys are all 5th, 6th, and 7th round projected picks, and we've been drafting them from the third round onwards, and I've gotten all excellent picks for every pick. So something to think about. I'm gonna take another receiver here in Tyrone Benjamin out of Boise State, 6'5", 437 speed, good top three skills. Here he is, another excellent pick, ranked 117. We took him at 164, 92 speed at 6'5". He'd be such a, such a good, such a, I can't even say that enough, such a good player if we actually played these games. Um, all it is is route running, got to bring up. The rest is really, really good already. Tremendous player. Probably won't get the field too much. No one is left on my board. Leonard Blackman looks like the best player available out of UCLA. We're going to take him. Another excellent pick. Ranked 122 in the draft. We take him at 176, or 196, excuse me, can't even read. 70 overall. It works. Uh, another tremendous draft. It's, it's just too easy at this point, honestly. It's funny, I didn't even have to change the height or weight on... On, on what you know what we're changing into Sam Darnold he matches up literally perfectly at 6'4 225 do have to change one thing though and that is uh make him slightly lighter do they not want to change it okay 
There we go. All right, so after upgrading, this is the team. Deion Kane is actually going to start in his rookie year in the slot. D, excuse me, offensive line looks kind of meh, kind of whatever. David Njoku is up to an 89 overall. On the defense side of the ball, we are, of course, now in a 3-4. Ed Oliver is now an 82 overall, not an 83 overall because he's back to end, but in a different scheme fit for him. Um, Tavares McFadden should be starting. Can I do that? Yeah, I can that way. Easy. Um... Derwin James up to an 83 overall. Derek Kindred up to an 85. He had 60 man. Excuse me, 60 zone. Got that up to an 85. Roquan Smith is starting. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong Jr. is starting. I do not want Jamie Collins to start, and I don't want the CPU to make him start, so I'm going to change his position to a middle linebacker so that he does not finagle his way into starting somehow at left outside linebacker, but I still want him on the team. He's an 80 over. Oh, he's going to start over Roquan Smith somehow. Can't allow that to happen. Um, hopefully it doesn't, is what I can say on that. I think Emmanuel Agba now is 79 overall. I think he'll fit a little bit better at left outside linebacker. Got a bunch of pass rushers out here, a bunch of really, really talented ones. Hopefully they perform really, really well. I keep saying that. Um, but here we go. Hopefully Sam Darnold leads us to the promised land here in season number three, which I kind of doubt. But we'll simulate to the midseason mark and see how we're doing. Okay, so we're actually 5-2 and two right now. Oh, okay, of course, the Steelers are 6-2 and, and the Ravens are 7-1. and one. Derek Kindred is a free agent, it looks like. Is that who that is? It is. So is Corey Coleman. So is Seth DeValve and Emmanuel Agba. Did I say DeValve? Why do I keep saying DeValve? Emmanuel Agba, Jamar Taylor. Don't really care about Spencer Drango or J.C. Treader much, but I think I need to bring back at least these top four guys. I don't think we're going to stay with Jamar Taylor. He's just not good enough. No man, no zone. He's fast, 28, I'm, I'm out. All right, so he brought back those four guys that I wanted to. I know DeValve is going to be a backup tight end. I'm okay with that. And uh, we could do better than Emmanuel Agba. More, uh, more than likely, Vic Beasley is going to be in free agency. I'm not really worried about it, though. Uh, decent amount of XP for a lot of these players, to be fair. Not Nothing major, though. Defensively, at least Jamie Collins didn't snake his way into starting somehow. Ooh, a lot of XP for Ed Oliver. But I think... Do I spend XP now? I think I'm going to. This is the upgraded team. Pretty good if you ask me. Although I guess no one did because I'm by myself in my room recording videos. Regardless, team's looking pretty good. Uh, Tafaris McFadden is upgrading so, so quickly. I have to superstar development. All right, that makes a bit of sense. But um, nevertheless, let's simulate to the playoffs. And I think it's a 50-50 chance of whether we make it or not, even though we started out to such a good record. Hopefully we do make it here in season number three. Season number four coming regardless, but here we go. Oh, we actually did make the playoffs. That's kind of cool. 12-4 um, and four we finished. Didn't really expect that. However, I will show you the schedule. I mean, all of you know at this point, there's no reason for me to cheat. Why can't I? I don't want to do it that way. I want to do a team schedule. But if for some reason you thought that I might have enforced wins, nope, didn't. No reason to. Let's go ahead and see how we got here, though. As I saw just say, Russell Wilson's MVP. Sam Darnold, good rookie season. Nearly 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, 13 interceptions rushing. Duke Johnson, 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns. Rookie Benny Snell out of Kentucky, 400 yards, 10 touchdowns. Receiving David Njoku led our team in catches, in yards, in touchdowns, really. Corey Coleman, five touchdowns. Kelvin Benjamin, four. Rookie Deion Kane with four. Almost 1,000 yards for him in the slot. Sacks allowed, not even that many, to be honest. We need a better left tackle, though. Tackled for loss, we would have 16 from Danny Shelton, 14 from Miles Garrett. Jeez. Quarterback sacks, 19 and a half for Miles Garrett, 7 from Ed Oliver, 4 for Malcolm Brown, 4 for Dorrance Armstrong Jr., 3 and a half for Danny Shelton. Yo, does Emmanuel Agba even play? 39 total tackles, 0.5 sacks. Left outside linebacker might not play in a specific scheme. Derek Kendrick had two touchdowns. Christian Kirksey had one. Holy. Where are these defensive touchdowns coming from? Derwin James even had one. Four fumbles. Two for Miles Garrett. Fumble recoveries. One from a number of players. Looks like most of our defensive line there, to be honest. Let's go ahead and check out awards. See who won what. I'm hoping for rookie of the year, at least. Don't see any Browns in here. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Phillip Rivers of the 8-8 eight eight Chargers. Interesting. To shame Leonard Fournette or Blake Bortles, of course, the best quarterback in the NFL. Couldn't do it. 
Uh, any other Browns? No. Defense Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. I'll take it 12 and 4. That's going to be a lot of XP. Christian Kirksey at number 7. My voice just did something weird there. Dorrance Armstrong at number 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year, of course, is Sam Darnold. Benny Snell at number 2. Deion Kane at number 4. I think Deion Kane had a better season than Benny Snell did. Though I guess 10 touchdowns is a lot. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Jerron Biggers. Wanted to draft him. Couldn't. He went a little bit before, but we ended up getting Ed Oliver. Number four, not too shabby at all. So we do have a first round buy even. 32K XP for Sam Darnold. Wish that was a bit more. 20K for Najoku. Defensively, um, 51K for Miles Garrett is somewhat notable. And 40K for Derwin James. Is that a Pro Bowl? It's got to be. And it is. All right, let's see what we have in the divisional. The 11 and 5 Raiders. All right, we're going to have to uh, have to upgrade our team. Hopefully they turn out pretty well. Pretty good? Pretty well, Jesus. Hopefully it turns out pretty well, and these players turn out pretty good. There we go. All right, so if I didn't tell you, which I don't think I did, here we are. This is the upgraded team. I probably should have started Brian Batty Calhoun over Jason McCourty, considering how much Jason McCourty continues to regress now that he's 32 years of age. It's not a good move. However, rest of the team looks pretty good. Derwin James up to a 92 overall. Ed Oliver dominating in his rookie season. Miles Garrett all the way up to a 97 overall. Offensively, Sam Darnold's an 89. David Njoku's a 93. I mean, we have we have some weapons. We might be able to beat the Raiders here. Let's go ahead and simulate to the conference championship and see if we make it. And we do. We now have a shot to take down the mighty Blake Bortles and the Jacksonville Jaguars at Everbank Field in Jacksonville to advance to the Super Bowl. We're going to upgrade Sam Darnold first. So upgrading awareness like plus four or five doesn't even do anything to his overall. That's fine. He's playing at a 92 with confidence. Stay confident, Sam. Is there any defensive player of the week that we might have won? Doesn't really seem to be much XP to go around. Here we go. To advance to the Super Bowl here in season number three. We don't. Okay. Unfortunate. Bottom line, unfortunate. Season four is our year. Calling it. So I'd obviously really like Jalen Ramsey. Akeem Tlaib isn't an unrealistic sign as he is a 34-year-old corner, uh, clearly in the twilight of his career, but he's still a 90 overall. Could fit for us, not sure if I want to go that route. Same kind of deal with Emmanuel Sanders. Not sure if we do that. I, Larmy Tunsil, maybe? All right, so I just realized Lindsey Murphy, once I move him to left tackle, is an 81 overall, which is why he didn't start over... Uh, Rod Johnson here, which is a hilarious name, by the way. That's another Florida State player. But um, he's going to start at left tackle now. It's not a fantastic offensive line, but it's it's pretty damn good. Only real thing we need now, I guess, is... I don't know. I mean, we could go wide receiver. I don't think we're going to. Need a fullback. It's kind of it. We'll, uh, we'll take one that's available in the draft. Why not? Here's our 29th overall pick. I didn't really do much in the way of scouting. I had the CPU handle it all. And, um, I don't know. I'm kind of just going to take someone that looks good. That's kind of my plan. She say, hey, maybe you need a wide receiver. Oh, actually, this guy looks pretty sick. Josiah Maxwell in the third. Might have to be the move. Oh, and Dixon Bell. Easy, slow? Of course he is. Good top three skills, though. Might be the look in the sixth. No good top receivers, though. Not even, like, nobody. My voice just gave out of me. Jason Foley's the move. Cornerback. Good top three skills. Fast. Uh, not uh, His development isn't fast, though. Uh, ugh, tough. That's tough. I mean, not much you can do. He likely wasn't going to play anyway unless he was an 80 overall or above and had good development. So, I mean, there were too many variables there. Couldn't do it. Oh, we skipped the combine, and he went to Florida State, which is basically the theme of this rebuild. I have to. Okay, he's a baller. Let's go. <laughs> Avius Quistra out of Florida State. 95 speed, 79 man, 84 zone. He won't start. He's a good player. Can't really do much with him. I might as well take him now. Dixon Bell in the third, even though he's supposed to go late sixth. Here he is. 76 overall, quick development, rank number 50. We took him at 93. Really, really good player. Again, don't know if he's actually going to play at all. 
He's gonna be what, fourth string probably? Yeah, I don't know. That's gonna be all the picks I take though. Maybe the CPU drops me a gem in the seventh. I'll sign an undrafted free agent fullback who's like a 90 overall per usual. It's just what happens. Nope, CPU went full Browns on me and uh, drafted absolute trash. There are no rookie fullbacks that are good. What is going on here? We'll take Ricky Ortiz. All right, so this will about be the team. I'm going to save the XP. Might as well. There's no real reason to spend it. I'm going to save it until the midseason mark where I will meet you guys. That is the team for season number four, the fourth and final season. The Cleveland Browns are Super Bowl bound. Kind of rhymed. I'm not a rapper. I know some of you thought. No, I'm not. Nice. Of course, we're four and three. Of course. Of course, we're four and three. I can't, I can't believe it, man. Every time. Something always like this happens. What? Something like this always happens. Although, to be fair, it's a more competitive division. We're in second place. One game out of first. Or I guess technically one and a half. But we could make a run at the playoffs. Got some XP to use. I'm going to use all of it. This is going to be a different team. It's going to be a higher overall team. A better performing team. We got this. We're making the playoffs. All right, so somehow Debo Samuel works his way back into the starting lineup, and I did not want that. Bell is back and better than ever. I just upgraded him. Looks pretty good. And, um, yeah, I just want to let you know the CPU is trying to screw me, so if we don't win, it's not my fault. All right, though, this is the team for the playoffs. I know it's only week nine. We're making the playoffs. I can guarantee you. We got a good team. All that's left now, and Tavares McFadden has silently been like one of the best players in this entire rebuild. It's his second year. He's already a 90 overall. Sick coverages. Really, really, really good player. And look at Doris Armstrong Jr., 89 overall. Ed Oliver's up to an 88. Like, I mean, we have some players on this team. If we don't go to the Super Bowl or, I mean, at least the playoffs, it'll be an absolute failure for Madden Sim because you've seen this team. You know what they can do. We all know what they can do. It's the game. They're holding me back. It's what it is. Like, it's an interesting... Or, ooh. What word was that? Headphones off so I can actually speak for a moment. You know when you're going into a fight and, uh, you know, someone says, hold me back. It's like, I'm trying to fight EA, but EA is the one holding me back. So it's like, what do I do? We went 8-8 eight and eight and we actually made the playoffs. As seemingly everyone in the division went 8-8, eight and eight, except for the Bengals, who suck. Decent amount of XP there for Sam Darnold. We'll check out the stats, see how we got to where we are. Oh my goodness. 5,306 passing yards for Sam Darnold. 37 touchdowns, 11 interceptions rushing. Duke Johnson, 1,200 yards, 6 touchdowns. Benny Snell, 17 touchdowns as the backup. Kelvin Benjamin, nearly 100 catches. 1,371 yards, 7 TDs. David Njoku, 1,100 yards on 93 catches, 7 TDs. Corey Coleman only had 2 touchdowns on 89 catches for uh, 834 yards. Although Debo Samuel, who we took out at like the midseason mark, 9 touchdowns. I didn't like the slow development. Dixon Bell, I mean, he did well too, 6 touchdowns. <sighs> Same, very similar stats to Debo Samuel, just uh, besides touchdowns. In fact, blocking... Offensive line performed extremely well. Defensively, Christian Kirk's the letter team in tackles with 112. Dorrance Armstrong had 101. Tackles for loss, 12 from Danny Shelton, 10 from Miles Garrett. Quarterback sacks, 14 from Ed Oliver, 12 and a half for Miles Garrett, 9 for Danny Shelton, 4 and a half for Malcolm Brown. We're in a 3 4, but Malcolm Brown, I guess, plays a lot. And, like,. Dorrance Armstrong Jr. is like a regular outside linebacker, I guess. Because he allowed 36 catches, which is a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is a lot. And Emmanuel Agba too, dude. I mean we're in a we're in a we're in a 3-4. I changed the books. I just don't get why it's not playing like a 3-4. Interceptions, four for Brian Body Calhoun, three for Darwin James, two for Jason McCourty. Force fumbles. We have three from Tavares McFadden. Fumble recoveries, we have one for a handful of players. I guess three is a handful if you have small hands. One touchdown for Brian Body Calhoun. We are first in the NFL in offensive yards. Le'Veon Bell takes home MVP, though. Sam Darnold at number three. Any Browns? No. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Le'Veon Bell. Sam Darnold at three. No Browns. Defensive Player of the Year, CJ Mosley, as not only 
does our man not repeat? Of course, Miles Garrett. He's not even in the top 10. Kevin Roth takes home Offensive Rookie of the Year honors. There's Dixon Bell. Defensive Rookie of the Year. It doesn't matter, but it's Spencer Montgomery. We actually get one. Avius Kuistra, the baller, actually does end up in that top 10 there. Where are we in defensive yards? 12th. Ugh. I might I might change the book for this for this playoff run because eight and eight is just not going to cut it. All right. I, even though the scheme was three four, and we are running a three four book, I changed the book. Hopefully, it's more three four than it was. If that makes sense. <laughs> and um, I mean, Ed Oliver has a ton of XP. Is that a Pro Bowl or is that? It is D line of the year and it's a Pro Bowl appearance. Jeez, Ed Oliver, chill or don't chill. Actually, keep going. But. We have some XP to spend. I'm going to spend it, get this team better, and then see you guys for a playoff matchup. But, I mean, you'll see the roster after I'm finished anyway. So this is the team. Sam Darnold is up to a 97 overall, playing at a 98 overall with confidence. He's an absolute monster. So that's pretty good. Receiving core, I mean, it, they're developing. Offensive line is what it is. David Njoku is up to a 96 overall. And then defensively, I mean, things look pretty solid, I would say, overall. Ed Oliver is up to a 96 overall with confidence. Miles Garrett stays the same. Derwin James up to a 96. However, Roquan Smith, even though he was playing the in a 3-4, he wasn't on the field really at all. So there was no room for him to develop because I was swindled into believing that he would play and Danny Shelton would not, or Mark, uh, Malcolm Brown would not. However, it worked. So hopefully in this new system, we are more dominant than ever and hopefully we dominate the chiefs and advance to the divisional as we do i actually want to see the stats in that beat the chiefs 34 to 24 i want to check out the defensive stats though sam darnold have a day rushing benny snell played pretty well duke johnson did too but i got to figure out how to get the backup running back like no carries so our main guy can dominate that's what i want don't know how to make it happen just yet I'll find out. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. This is one thing I know about franchise. Like, you guys are always trying to tell me tips in the comments. I'm like, yeah, I know. Tackles for loss. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. One from somebody, which is, is good. It was from uh, Miles Garrett. Any quarterback sacks. One and a half from Dorrance Armstrong Jr. That's what I want. I want that. 0.5 from Christian Kirksey. 0.5 from Danny Shelton. Leonard Blackman. Who the f... I don't even know. Interceptions, any? Nah. All right, here's the Jaguars. They beat us last year. Knocked us out of the playoffs. That was in the conference championship. This time it's a divisional. One of us is not making it back to the conference championship in back-to-back -back years. Will it be Cleveland or will it be Jacksonville? Asked and answered. We lose again. Oh, I want to do a fifth season. I want to do a fifth season. We're going to do it. All right, so we did bring back. It was our last chance to negotiate with all these guys, pretty much, or all of them. We got David Njoku back. We got Miles Garrett back. Those were two huge guys that we couldn't miss. We don't need Rod Johnson. We don't need Larry Ogunjobi. We don't really need Jason McCourty. I would like him, but we don't need him. We're, I guess, really one cornerback away from, you know, a Super Bowl, I think, at this point, because Jason McCourty was one of those main guys holding us back, I want to say. Dalvin Cook is here. Ugh, so is Malik McDowell, Tack McKinley, Taylor Moten, Glaze Campbell. Key Tlaib. He might be the guy. I don't know. I'm going to offer him a deal. All right, Key Tlaib is back to join this star-studded Browns roster and actually start on our team. Oh, I forgot about Quistra. Well on you, mate. Florida State. And we have Foley. Who are Jason? Oh, slow development. Who, who cares? But... Uh, here we go. We have the team. We have the roster. Let's go ahead, advance to the draft. Perhaps we can get a quality player. I screwed up on player there. It's a bad accent. I can't hear what I sound like, so it's a bit rough. We're in the draft. Taking best player available at a position where they might actually get some playing time. Maybe it's cornerback. Maybe it's wide receiver. Maybe it's offensive line. I don't know. We pick 25th. That's probably all I'm going to take. Lucky Fair. What a name. Pretty trash. All right, great set of cornerbacks. Let's check wide receiver. Maybe there's some equally good. Ah, quality. 
He looks way better than a third round guy. He looks so good. We're going to take him. Yeah, of course. Javante Gibson, 80 overall, superstar development, ranked 15th. We took him at 25. What are you doing there in the third round, guy? Who cares about this draft? See you in season five. There's that fullback we talked about. The entire draft, outside of my picks, sh shit, 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 shit. Actually, what? He's actually a stud. However, shit, shit, shit. And then 83 overall fullback followed up, of course, with diarrhea. However, EJ Mann, this guy is the man. All right, here we go. This is the offense of our team. If only we had a better receiver, that'd be fantastic. However, this is the defense. I'm starting Gibson in the slot. He's going to upgrade far past all the rest of these guys. So now our cornerbacks are so deep, it's unbelievable. We have a good team. If we don't win it now, it's never happening. This is the team that is going to take us to the promised land. Everyone's upgraded. Without further ado, straight to the playoffs. See you there. 10-6. and six. We have made the playoffs. Don't see any crazy amount of XP on defense. 26K for Gibson is not bad. What about offensively? Oh, I don't know if that's an MVP. That's that's probably receiver of the year, though. 47K? It's a Pro Bowl. Oh, okay. I see you. Let's check out the stats. We didn't even win the division. Sam Darnold is pretty much killing it. 4,600 yards nearly. We'll call it that. 32 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. So a step back. Duke Johnson, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Benny Snell Jr., 10 touchdowns receiving. Dixon Bell, okay. Nearly 1,300 yards, 92 catches, 13 TDs. David Njoku had seven touchdowns. Kelvin Benjamin, over 1,000 yards. Defensively, though, this is what I'm looking for. Roquan Smith played well. Show me sacks. Show me, show me something here. Emmanuel Agba, 10. Ed Oliver, 10. Actually, Agba had 12. 8.5 for Garrett. 5.5 for Dumars Armstrong. I don't get how this, this works at all, man. Interceptions, four for Tavares McFadden, three for Roquan Smith, three for Aqib Talib. I think they need to work on simulation stats a lot. It's just not... I don't think any of them are ever really that realistic as Tavares McFadden gets a touchdown. Awards-wise, we didn't win anything. Leonard Fournette got MVP. I mean, he's a beast. Bottom line. Sam Darnold at, uh, was 7th or 8th in MVP. He finishes 6th for AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year for the AFC. Christian Kirksey at five, no other Browns. Rookies in here. Oh, the man at number six, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Javante Gibson at six. Was hoping he'd win. We also had somebody else in there. I don't know who it is. I didn't even see his name. Let me go ahead and upgrade this team. I think Dixon Bell might be insane. His speed isn't that good, but the rest of his stats are just so quality. Gibson is up to an 87 overall. Welcome to Superstar Development. Just wanted to add that. Pretty sick team, I have to say. Sam Darnold's at a 99 overall. I don't mind it. Pretty pleased. Dixon Bell, 89 overall. We got ourselves we got ourselves a roster here, honestly, defensively. Um, I mean, nothing crazy at all. There's a 96. He's an absolute beast. I keep switching these guys, and the other one keeps getting a higher overall. What's going on? I don't know. Uh, Roquan Smith up to an 83. Wildcard playoff round. Tell me we beat the Chargers at least, right? Right? Yes. Oh, the fucking Jags. Fuck. Wish it was any team but the Jags. However, it is the Jags. To get to the conference championship, can we finally beat them? Yes! Yes, we do. And we face the Buffalo Bills. I'm okay with that. I'm so okay with that. It's the Bills trying to, once again, trigger everyone in Buffalo. Tavares McFadden is such a beast. Not even going to bother upgrading. I'll see you in the Super Bowl. We're making it. Fuck Buffalo. Yes, here we are. And the Eagles are in it? Okay. <laughs> They're not winning a Super Bowl. They're not. This is the team, and it is a sick one. Benny Snell has silently gone up to an 89 overall. The CPU is been upgrading, some, so it's a 99 carrying. Defensively... We looking nice. Javante Gibson. Yeah. You're at number two now. Super Bowl. We're going in. What are the overalls looking like? 95 to 92. This shouldn't even be a game. So it is 21 nothing right now. 28 nothing. It's been an absolute slaughter. The Philadelphia Eagles, who we let score points in the third quarter after beating them 35 to 7. 
now 35-10, 42-10. This is not even a game. I told you it wouldn't be, and it wasn't. 42-10 as the first team to win a Super Bowl. Actually, I didn't even realize that until just this moment. Eagles have never won a Super Bowl. Browns has never won a Super Bowl. Two teams who have never won a Super Bowl face each other in the Super Bowl to win a Super Bowl, and it's the Browns. Of course, it is the Browns. I love it. Cleveland under the guise of Sam Darnold. Other rookies like Tavares McFadden, Roquan Smith, Ed Oliver. A bunch of drafted players that have really helped this team, you know, take shape and form the identity of what it is here in the fifth season, 2021. Sam Darnold is your MVP, 227 yards and three touchdowns for the USC quarterback who decided to stay another year at USC. So he could become a Cleveland Brown. Usually, you try to escape the Cleveland Browns, but in this case, he is not. And the Cleveland Browns have won the Super Bowl because of it. There's Duke Johnson, there's Sam Darnold, Kelvin Benjamin, who you could probably pick a better player to, to go up there and hold the trophy as Christian Kirksey lost it high. But yes, the Cleveland Browns are Super Bowl champions. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.